trouble. Someone ought to put pay to you, and we'll have peace at last. <laughs> you two quarreling about here, for the love of God? This pipsqueak here claims studying is as hard a job as working in the stables. I most certainly did not, because study is of course much harder work than mucking out a bit of horse manure. See? That's what I'm talking about, and yet it's as clear as day. Hang on, what's as clear as day? That study is as hard as mucking out stables, if not harder. A man who doesn't work with his hands is an idler, and a good-for-nothing. Am I wrong? I'd like to ask you a couple of questions before answering. You're a scholar. What are you doing in Scanitz? I'm on my way to Sassau with letters. This ingrate here is stabling my horse overnight before I continue my journey. What does your work involve, student? I'm no student, but a baccalaureus. Having completed the trivium of the Faculty of Liberal Arts in the University of Prague, grammar, rhetoric, and dialectics are my work, while this yokel wouldn't be capable even of learning Latin. Father arranged that I will serve as a teacher in Kuttenberg for two years before returning to the university to attend the quadrivium. To teach and be taught, that is real work. You serve Sir Radzig at the castle, don't you, Master Groom? Aye, and Sir Radzig is very pleased with my work. I can be rightly proud of what I do, and I bring home a nice wage, too. The children are fed, and the wife can buy herself a nice scarf from time to time. I'm satisfied with my lot. How many people can say that? What's so hard about your job, Master Groom? That's real work. Not like this parasite here does. On my feet from dawn till dusk, feeding, mucking out, grooming. By evening, I'm dead on my feet. I'm doing something real, see? Something that makes sense. Horses are needed for work, for the lords, for riding out, even in times of war. And someone has to care for those horses. All this good-for-nothing can do is mouth off. I'd never be able to do a real job. That's all I need to know. You're both right, but not one of you has a grain of sense. Work is work, whether it's done with your hands or your heart. Ah, rhetoric worthy of Socrates himself, and out of the mouth of a woman. I bow to you, good maiden. The professors of Prague could learn a thing or two from you. Are you saying this good-for-nothing here, who has to beg for his beer at the tavern, is my equal? But to hell with it. I won't argue. Teresa.
God's sake, Teresa. No sign of the blacksmith. Where can he be? Mother of God, you look like you've been assaulted. Father sent me to pick up nails, but there's no one at the fort. Aye, uh, sorry, lass. Martin had to go to the castle to talk to Sir Radzig. He's to forge a sword for his lordship. Oh, I see. And has he made the nails for Pa? I'm afraid he hasn't had time on account of that sword. But if you'll come tomorrow, he'll surely have them for you. I'll remind him this evening. All right. I'll stop by tomorrow. Do that, dear. Oh, and by the way, the girls were looking for you. Which girls? Bianca and Johanka. You should stop by and see them before you go home. You girls must be plotting something. What was it about? They didn't say, but it seemed important. Which probably means boys, I suppose, eh? There's no harm in that, is there, good wife? You were young yourself once and went dancing with boys. Oh, so I'm an old woman now, am I? Uh, no, I didn't mean it like that. I'm only teasing you, girl. Dancing is just what you young ones should be doing. Make the most of it while you can. Before you know it, your pa will find you a husband and you'll have a pack of children to take care of. <laughs> Let's hope it's not too soon. Thanks for letting me know. I'll stop by tomorrow for those nails, then. Not at all. Oh, and another thing, Teresa. Have you seen Henry around anywhere? If he helped his father out more at the forge, there'd be no shortage of nails. I haven't seen him at all. No doubt he's at that sword play with that so-called combat master again. If he could wield a hammer half as good as a wooden sword, there'd be no shortage of nails.
That's really quite a pile of hay you have. <sighs> You're telling me. There's no end to the stuff. Is there anything I can do to help? Uh, I ain't the youngest, uh, truth be told. But I can still handle one cartload of hay. I hope so. It's just that it seems like there's no end to it at all. Uh, indeed. Uh, uh, I'd rather see it all burn to ashes than keep breaking my back here for all eternity. so bright and early. Papa has me running around from dawn till dusk. You know how it is. Indeed I do. I'm glad you're here, Tess. You've got to help me with something. But first, can you go and see Henry for me? He's at the sheepfold by the stockade, as usual. Oh? Playing around with wooden swords again? Hi. He's getting ready for the life of a mighty warrior. Well, at least we know he'll be able to protect you from outlaws with wooden swords. <laughs> oh well, boys and their games. Listen, would you bring him a beer from me? But why don't you bring it yourself? If Pa saw me running after Henry, he'd tend my hide. But I can't leave him dry in this heat. All right, I'll bring the beer to him. Thanks. And don't forget to tell him it's from me. Everyone knows all the beer in Scallops is from you and your pa. <laughs> you know what I mean. And listen, Tess. Once you've given him the beer, come back to me again. Meanwhile, I'll make an excuse to pa. I need you to go somewhere with me. But I'll tell you all about it after. Run along before the beer gets warm.
I'm right up, good people. God be with you, Henry. Mind you don't get hurt. Good day, Teresa. I brought you a beer. I'd say you'd need it after a hard battle. Ah, great. It's as hot as Pa's Forge out here today. That's very sweet of you to get me a beer. Actually, Bianca sent it. Her Pa doesn't want her to come here. Ah, I see. I'll make it up to her this evening. I don't want to know how. How come you're training on your own today? You're usually here with that vagabond. What's his name? Vanyek. And he's not a vagabond. He's a wayfaring combat master. Well, it looks like he's off wayfaring somewhere else today. Yeah, <laughs> more likely sleeping off last night's boozing. Actually, since I've no opponent today, wouldn't you like to have a go? I mean, a bit of swordplay. I could teach you. Me? Swordplay? Sure. Why not? All right, then. I accept your challenge, young sir, but I must warn you, I can swat a mouse with a broom with my eyes closed. Yeah, I knew you had the heart of a warrior. Let's go then. Come on then, show me what you're made of. Whoever is the first to hit the other ten times is the victor. What if I hurt you though? Ah, uh, don't worry, I can handle it.
don't go easy on me, Harry. Ah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, really? Now that is hardly chivalrous behavior. Now, I shall have to fight for my honor. Take that, you scoundrel! Oh. Are you all right? It's nothing, I'm fine. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Are you mad at me? No, of course not. My stupid fault. Well, that'll teach you to go around slapping decent, God-fearing girls on the backside. <laughs> Let me have a look at it. No, no, it's only a scratch and a couple of splinters. And I didn't mean to, you know. Show me that. No, really, it's nothing. You know how it is, Hal. He who lives by the sword. Dies by the splinter, eh? <laughs> <laughs> There now. By the way, you owe Bianca for that beer. <laughs> <laughs> 